This is, I, I kid you not, this is the same gathering that the former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Liz Truss, is currently attending. All right, welcome. Welcome. I just wanted to say look, welcome to the end of democracy. <laughs> we are here to overthrow it completely. We didn't get all the way there on January 6th, but we will, we, we will endeavor to, forget, oh, oh, oh. to get rid of it and replace it with, with this right here. We'll replace it with this right, right. here. Amen. I, 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 I don't know whether I'm going crackers sometimes, but just imagine for a minute if Diane Abbott turned up at an event where another speaker was calling for the end of democracy and boasting about their associations with people who actually launched a coup upon the, an attempted coup upon the uh, uh, American government after Donald Trump lost the last election. I, 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 I struggle to get my head around this because I've written a book, and that's not bad, is it? I got to 11.07 today without mentioning it. I've written a book about the madness that allowed Liz Truss to become Prime Minister and Boris Johnson. But the one thing I never actually expected to happen, the one thing I never expected to happen was Liz Truss having ceased to be Prime Minister, dedicating the rest of her life to proving all of the points that I have made in the book crackers doesn't actually go far enough um have I, I i've got some clips of of liz truss speaking yes there's a full 15 minute speech that she gave and i want you to hear some bits of it so this is the lesson that i have learned i've learned that it's not enough just to have the right policies it's not even enough to get the position of power that you need to deliver those policies because conservatives are now operating in what is a hostile environment. And we essentially need a bigger bazooka in order to be able to deliver. And I think we have got to challenge the institutions themselves. We've got to challenge the system itself. And we've got to be prepared to take that on as conservatives. So uh, a £45 billion pounds worth of unfunded tax cuts that were introduced and were cheered by, I, I mean, almost all of the UK media. Daily Mail, cometh the hour, cometh the woman. At last, a true Tory budget. Daily Express, put faith in trust to deliver for Britain. Uh, Sunday Telegraph, trust plans to cut taxes again in, in New Year. I, I, extraordinary uh, levels of support for the madness that her and Kwasi Kwarteng inflicted upon the country. She's there with Steve Bannon, sitting next to Steve Bannon, who has told people to wear the accusation of racism proudly. She is on the same stage as that bloke you heard at the beginning, who's some sort of um, influential YouTuber, uh, calling for the end of democracy to be replaced uh, essentially by precisely the people who attend events like this. It's a former British Prime Minister going crackers in public while claiming somehow to represent the UK, to somehow speak for us, as she lies and lies and lies again. I'll read you something Nigel sent me from Belfast, which is, um, which is actually quite powerful. Uh, I, I, it stopped me in my tracks, to be honest. Remember the complacency of 1920s German politicians regarding Hitler. Depressing though it may be, we must give attention to all the deluded fringes because you never know where they move next. What I want to talk most of all about today is the fact that the very basis of Western civilization is being undermined. The values, the Anglo-American values that we hold dear, that were encapsulated in Magna Carta, in the Bill of Rights, in the American Constitution. They're being questioned and undermined. Our history is being challenged. Even our biology is being challenged. Can you imagine? Could you have imagined 10 years ago that we'd be talking about what a woman is and what a man is and having a serious argument about it? It's incredible. And yet every issue, the left win, they push it even more. They push it to even more extremes. And meanwhile, we've seen President Biden asleep at the wheel in the White House. Now, in Britain, we are one of the few countries that still have a conservative government. But the left did not accept that they'd lost at the ballot box. Instead, 
They've been weaponizing our court system to stop us deporting illegal immigrants. They've been using the administrative state to make sure that conservative policies are thwarted. And they've been pushing their woke agenda through our schools, through our campuses, and even in our corporations. Now, I thought that companies in the free market were meant to be about giving people jobs, giving people opportunities, making money, making profits, creating wealth for our country. But no, we've got a new kind of economics now in the West. It's called wokeonomics. Um, she's too dangerous to ignore. Her, uh, Trump, Andrew Tate, if we try to ignore them, they will spread their message somewhere and it will be somewhere that's unchecked. And therefore, how do we offer balance? How do we make them take responsibility for what they've said? How do we what do you make think sure... she's playing at on a personal level? I mean, personal stroke professional level. What do you think she's actually playing at? You know, there's, a, there's another universe, Phil. There's a parallel universe in which Remain won the referendum in 2016 and she, she would have tried to topple David Cameron from the left of the Conservative Party, I, I, you know, as, as, as a prominent Remain campaigner. There's a completely parallel universe in which her curious marriage of, of enormous ambition and tiny intelligence would have seen her attacking the Tory party from the other side of the political divide. What do you think has happened to her? But this is the Tory party in general at the moment, isn't it? There's no politicians there. There's just want to be celebrities. They just want power. They want fame. They want exposure in the hope that it will land them with a massive job that pays them, you know, <laughs> hundreds of thousands, if not millions a year. So you just think it is name. just greed, either for, for, for power or for wealth? But, but, I but, think that's but, all it is. And I think that's all the Tory party has been for a long... I'm not a Tory supporter, as you might tell. <laughs> well, you might but, be. You might be a supporter of the kind of Ken Clark, Rory Stewart, uh, Dominic Grieve b b brand of conservatism, but that's utterly alien to what Liz Truss seems to represent I, these days. I think a good idea is a good idea, regardless who came up with it. Yeah, nicely so put. I'm not, I'm not blinded by my politics, but the, this isn't politics. What the Tories are doing at the moment, Liz Truss, Cammy Badenoch, um, Suella Bradman, it's, it's, it's disgusting. It's grotesque. And the question of whether they believe it or not is moot, really, isn't it? Because it doesn't matter whether they believe it or not. They're appealing to people who will or who do or who pretend to in order to, you know, sanitise their racism, sanitise their Islamophobia, sanitise their anti-Semitism, whatever it may be. Uh, the analogy I draw is with the fundamentalist evangelical Christians in the Bible Belt of America who have the same tunnel vision that ignores the scholarship of um, yeah. experts yeah. and uh, uh, regardless of the fact that those experts have a reputation and a career to well, this um, is the, This is the fossils were put there by God to challenge us kind of school of thought, isn't it? There were no dinosaurs yeah. and the fossils aren't real. The, you, you, the, the, it's just tests from God to challenge our faith. That kind of incredible cultish subscription. Yeah, it is dangerous. I think she's dangerous and we shouldn't ignore her because we really ignored that with Mrs Thatcher. Um, I expect there's going to be a James O'Brien law before long that we mustn't draw analogies. With Margaret Thatcher. With... Well, oddly, I think she'd be turning in her grave at what Liz Truss has been saying in America. I really do. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, I don't know that yeah. that's a fair analogy. Well, it's not an analogy anyway. It is. Because, I mean, because um, Margaret Thatcher was um, more intelligent and so on, which is um, really why her I've got ideas furniture that's appeared. more intelligent than this trust. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. I, I really do. She's turned yeah. into that Hopkins woman, hasn't she, really? She just seems to say anything yeah. for, a, for a speaker's check, but she was Prime Minister a couple of years ago. That's the bit I can't I know, quite get my head I around. Know, uh, which is embarrassing to us, as, as Trump is embarrassing to the right-thinking people in America. So, however, the more ridiculous it gets, the more attention we should pay, because history has taught us that the line between ridiculous and dangerous can be perilously thin.